Hi, welcome. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. Um, welcome to Understanding Key Landmark Case Laws for School Leaders, um, including navigating the legal framework for effective school leadership. The purpose is to, um, well, it's really aimed at highlighting the importance of combining legal knowledge and ethical practice. Um, as far as students' rights um, or student rights, uh, one essential landmark case was Tinker versus Des Moines Independent Community School District um, from 1979. Uh, students protested the Vietnam War by wearing black armbands to school, um, including Mary Beth Tinker and her brother John Tinker and their friend uh, Christopher. They decided to wear black armbands to school as a form of protest against the war. Um, however, the school district had a policy against wearing armbands. They were suspended. The students uh, were suspended until they agreed to remove them. Um, it arose from a conflict between students' uh, right to free speech and a school's authority to maintain discipline and order. Um, so essentially, the reason Tinker uh, versus Des Moines is a landmark Supreme Court case is that it affirms students' rights under the First Amendment in public schools. So the law itself recognizes that students do not um, shed their constitutional rights to freedom of speech and expression at the schoolhouse gate. In other words, students have the right to freedom of speech, including symbolic speech, which would be wearing armbands. Um, as far as implementation, you know, historically, excuse me, this case has been marked as a pivotal moment because it did recognize student rights within the school environment and establish that schools can only limit students free speech rights um, if it can be proven that their actions cause substantial disruption to the educational process. So how that impacts today, um, you know, the Tinker standard is still used as a frame, framework for addressing student free speech issues in schools. So that means that students can express their opinions as long as it doesn't significantly disrupt the learning environment. Um, and as we see, schools often have their own policies and guidelines in place to balance this, um, you know, this idea of free speech rights with a need to maintain a productive and safe student learning environment. Um, so as we go forward, this is um, essential for teachers and administrators because they must they must navigate this um, the rights and responsibilities carefully to ensure that students have voices and they're heard, while also maintaining student discipline. Um, another landmark case was um, regarding teachers' rights would be Pickering versus the Board of Education from 1968. Um, Another Supreme Court case involving Marvin Pickering, a high school teacher in Illinois, who wrote a letter to a local newspaper criticizing the school board's allocation of funds. So as a result, he was dismissed. Um, he challenged the court decision. Um, it is a landmark case because it established the balance and set the precedent for the balance between teachers' uh, free speech rights and the school's interest. Um, it recognizes that teachers, uh, like other citizens, do have the right to express their opinions on matters um, of public concern and the implementation historically that, um, you know, this case really reinforced the importance of academic freedom and free speech rights for education, clarified that teachers do not lose their First Amendment rights when they enter the classroom. Um, so today, schools still uphold these principles established in Pinkering um, by respecting teachers' right to express their opinions on public matters. The law also acknowledges that schools have a legitimate interest in maintaining discipline. So um, at the end of the day, an effective learning environment. Teachers are expected to exercise their rights, uh, free speech rights responsibly, and also consider the impact on the community. So um, the academic freedom, as affirmed by Pickering, uh, does allow teachers to contribute in public discourse and debate while fulfilling their roles as teachers. School safety, Goss versus Lopez of 1975. Um, and the background here, um, you know, where that students were suspended without due process. It originated in Ohio, where several students were actually suspended from school without a proper hearing or due process. 
students and their parents challenge the suspensions, arguing they were denying their constitutional right to due process, which was true. Description would be that, um, you know, this essentially was a landmark case because it clarified the importance of due process and disciplinary matters within the school context um, and emphasized students, even when facing disciplinary actions, are entitled to certain procedural protections to safeguard their rights. Um, in this case, we affirm that students do have the right to due process when facing uh, suspensions and expulsions and establish that uh, students have a legitimate property interest in their education. Um, and therefore, they cannot be deprived without uh, adequate due process, the implementation Implications for today, schools that um, they are required to provide students with a notice of the charges against them going forward and an opportunity to respond to those charges and a fair hearing when facing suspensions or sus expulsions. Um, while schools must ensure safety and order, they also have to respect student rights and follow, again, the proper procedures. So again, this balance between safety and due process to ensure that disciplinary actions are both fair and just. That brings us to slide number six, um, as far as discrimination and equitable actions. Um, another huge landmark case, you might have heard of Brown versus the Board of Education um, from 1954. Um, it was a turning point for civil rights as well. Um, and equality in the United States. So it offered a historic, um, or it involved a historic effort to end racial segregation in schools. It mandated the desegregation of public schools um, for the first time. So it emphasized that state sanctioned segregation of public schools based on race is inherently unequal and unconstitutional. And as far as implementation, um, it was instrumental in dismantling the whole legal framework of racial segregation in public education. So it led to the declaration that separate but equal, um, the educational facilities were inherently unequal and essentially violated the 14th Amendment of Equal Protection. So schools are now today uh, required to promote equity, non-discrimination, ensuring students of all races and backgrounds have equal equality, uh, access to quality education. The schools have implemented policies aimed at addressing many diverse needs and celebrating diversity. So again, significant progress has been made, but uh, challenges related to equity and discrimination continue to be addressed in modern education it is ongoing. As we've seen, um, IDEA, um, special education revolving around disabilities. Um, so the background of the um, IDEA um, case in 1990 was a response to the need for comprehensive federal law that ensured students with disabilities have access to free to FAPA, free and appropriate public education. Um, or free access to public education. Before IDEA, students with disabilities often faced um, exclusion from the educational system. Um, they're placed in separate settings. It was landmark because it, it allowed students to receive, receive special education and related services. It also focused on, um, it had to be tailored to their unique needs as in the form of an IEP and the least restrictive environment possible. So if they were able to um, be integrated into a gen ed classroom with their non-special education grade level peers, then that was what was to be done. Um, schools implemented IDA by identifying students with disabilities, first of all, just by conducting assessments, appropriate assessments, um, and then getting actual IEPs tailored to their needs. Um, it mandates that schools do this. They provide free access to public education um, as far as speech, OT, um, counseling, accommodations, and they're required to ensure all students with disabilities are educated. The key part here, alongside their uh, non-disabled peers in that least restrictive environment. Um, and it's definitely applied in different aspects and achieved in different ways. Um, but this was this was huge. Um, so it also and 
encourage collaborative um, meetings with parents, um, guardians, and the team, the IEP team, to receive the necessary supports and accommodations for success. So huge uh, win for SPED laws here um, with um, IDEA. Um, okay, next would we move on to uh, we've got you know student conduct and discipline. A case, an, um, another important case would be the Supreme Court case, uh, New Jersey versus TLO. Um, this centered around the Fourth Amendment of searches and seizures in schools. Um, because it originated, it originated at a high school in New Jersey, where student uh, TLO was found smoking in a restroom, subsequently searched by a school official. Um, it's a significant case because it establishes the standards for searches and seizures, addresses the balance of the student's Fourth Amendment rights and a school authority to maintain discipline and safety. Um, historically, it clarified that students do a, they do have Fourth Amendment rights at school, but those rights are not extensive as they are in adults in the criminal justice system. Um, it established that searches in schools must be reasonable based on reasonable suspicion rather than the stricter probable cause standard uh, applicable in the criminal justice system for adults. The schools also have to kind of balance, again, this need for maintaining dis discipline and safety with respecting students' constitutional rights. So schools typically have policies today um, going forward that, um, you know, have guided searches, that guide the searches to ensure they're conducted in accordance with the law. They balance discipline and student rights uh, carefully to consider the circumstances and severity and the threat to safety, um, which um, are super important in today's society and the struggle with gun violence. So a big, um, another huge landmark decision. So in summary, um, I just like to kind of talk about that. These are all key landmark laws that significantly shape the landscape of education. They revolve around student and teacher rights, um, school safety, discrimination and equity, special education and student conduct. And they they all discuss this balance between constitutional rights and the need for maintaining a, a productive learning environment. So it's, it's important to understand, you know, not only these laws also, um, but also to integrate the legal knowledge with ethical practice as um, principals and administrators. Um, so, um, I'm just going to take that out. Um, so we have to really make um, decisions that prioritize the well-being and rights of students, teachers, and really the whole school community. Uh, um, and so we're all adhering to the law. Again, it's a system of balance that um, balances these legal requirements with ethical considerations that have a just so we can have a fair and just classroom community and learning environment. I think this is a duplicate. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so thank you so, so much. And I appreciate you watching um, this presentation on kind of understanding some of these key landmark case laws for school leaders and how you know we can navigate the legal framework um, for successful school leadership. Thanks so much.